service of nine lessons and carols from St Chad's Church, Pattingham in South Staffordshire. That welcome is real and warm, whether you're watching this service in church with others in a socially distanced congregation, or whether you are safe and cosy at home, and whether you're on your own this Christmas time or with your immediate family. We cannot gather as usual with the church full of adults and children together for this service. We cannot sing in large groups of people, but we can still worship God and welcome the Christ child into our hearts. My deep thanks to our director of music, Greg Lewin, and to our choir who've worked really hard through December preparing this service. If you are at home, you can of course Join in with the congregational carols and the words will come up on the screen in order to help you. 
For those in church, I'm afraid you will have to restrict yourselves to humming quietly behind your face coverings. But you may find that the words themselves will sink even deeper into your heart and mind as you pray them silently. Thanks also to those who are contributing by reading our lessons. I'll introduce them as we go through the service. And thanks to Mike Richards for editing it all together and creating and finding our lovely images to enhance our worship. Please accept this service as a Christmas gift from all at St Chad's to you and your family and a reminder that even in the darkest times, God is faithful and will come to save us. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the baby lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all people, for unity and fellowship within the church he came to build and especially in this parish of Pattingham with Patsell. And because of all things, this would rejoice his heart. Let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom, in the Lord Jesus, we are for ever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, one of our junior choristers, Martha, reads us the first lesson, when we hear of how humanity, although given the perfect world in which to live by God began to spoil things. The story of the fall from the book of Genesis. Chapter 3, pages 8 to 14. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself, he said. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree. And I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, 
Because you have done this, cursed are among you all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Thanks be to God. blessed here in Pattingham to live in a lovely village surrounded by glorious countryside. But that countryside is a working environment and that must be cared for and stewarded. This year has seen a major change in land ownership 
and farming itself is undergoing many changes. It's very good to be able to welcome the Mercer family and to know that already they have demonstrated a willingness to be involved with our communities. So I'm delighted to be able to introduce most of you to Rob Mercer, who's going to read our second lesson, The Promise to Abraham, after which the choir sings the traditional Basque carol, The Angel Gabriel. Genesis 22, chapter 1, verse 19, the command to sacrifice Isaac. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had showed him. On the third day Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, the boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had showed him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram, caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram, and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand in, is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham lived at Beersheba. Thanks be to God. Show me. 
to us from one of our church wardens, Gina Richards. Church wardens are the right hand of any vicar and while they change from time to time I have been blessed during my time in Pattingham with outstanding colleagues. We hear now the prophecy of the Messiah's birth as given by the prophet Isaiah some hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus. This will be followed by another favourite carol, Silent Night. This reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
communities cannot function effectively without individuals who are willing to commit to public service. Parish councils are the bedrock of our nation in many ways and largely free, thankfully, from the political infighting of greater authorities. We're pleased to welcome Rob Lines, the current chairman of our own parish council, to give us our fourth lesson, the Messiah's Kingdom of Peace, Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 9, after which we have a way in a manger. Verse 1 will be sung by just the choir, after which please join in from home. The Peaceful Kingdom Isaiah 11.1-9 A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. In my opening words, I thanked our talented organist and director of music, Greg Lewin.
He's done so much this year to make our online worship really special by creating and coaching us all through the process of recording our virtual choir. Usually on occasions like this, he's much too busy, tethered behind the organ console to take any further part in the service. So this year it gives us an opportunity to give him a voice too. Greg reads our fifth lesson, the Annunciation to Mary from Luke's Gospel, which is followed by Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and then a special choir carol written by our organist emeritus, John Fellows, called Ring Out. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
to happen this year as a, as a result of the lockdown was the network of helpers that quickly came together covering the whole village with shopping and fetching prescriptions etc. We were very happy to support this initiative from St Chad's although many of our own congregation fell into vulnerable categories themselves but through the energy and enthusiasm of one young woman the village showed itself to be a caring community. I'm delighted that Becky Jane Green is reading our sixth lesson from St Matthew's Gospel, the birth of Jesus the Messiah. Matthew 1, the birth of Jesus the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Thanks be to God. Our farming community has had many challenges this past year, as we heard at harvest. Not only the problems associated with the pandemic, but a year of weather that has been particularly hard to manage. Farming can be a lonely sort of a job at the best of times, and now the social events that many look forward to have had to be suspended for this year. But we are more conscious than ever of our need for food and our reliance on those who tend the land. We will next hear the carol while shepherds watched. And then David Sampson reads the seventh lesson. The shepherds go to the manger from Luke's Gospel.
Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16, the shepherds and the angels. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, choir. I'm sure we've all enjoyed that rendition of A Christmas Lullaby. Now, we're going to hear from Sarah Yeomans, the head of our village Church of England school. I've really missed being able to go in and meet the children in school this year. Although our Open the Book team have done a fabulous job making videos of Bible stories for the children to enjoy, and I think the grown-ups too. And Sarah and all her staff have worked their socks off, keeping our children safe and providing a learning environment that is happy and relaxed. Let's listen now as she reads our eighth lesson from Matthew's Gospel. The Magi are led by the star to Jesus. The visit of the wise men, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down to pay him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered, offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
for that carol by Malcolm Archer, One Star. Now, let us pray. You came as a baby, Lord, as a little helpless child who relied on a human family to care for him. You cried because you were hungry, because you were homeless, because you were a stranger far away from home. You still cry with hunger, Lord, in the voices of the many who are starving. Your tears still flow for the homeless, the lonely and the forgotten. You still rely on human families to care for you. And so this Christmas, Lord, we pray, help us to be the kind of people who look for you in this world and joyfully discover you as we care for one another. Amen. And so we come to our ninth and final lesson, the glorious Gospel of Christmas, read this year by our newest church warden, Clive Pendrell. And following that, the choir will sing Gaudaute, which means rejoice. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it there was a man sent from god whose name was john he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him he himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light 
the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him but to those who received him who believed in his name he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or will of man but of God and the word became flesh and lived amongst us and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son full of grace and truth this is the gospel of the Lord draw to a close and as we all go and prepare to celebrate what I'm sure will be a rather quieter Christmas than usual I hope you have enjoyed this carol service for 2020 but let us fervently hope and pray that next year we can gather again inside church and raise the rafters with our singing so now the blessing may the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Merry Christmas.